All right, so I got a package here. This is gonna be involved with today's video. Got a shirt. Ah, no. Huh, that's better. All right. So let's see what we got here. Ooh, Ross Fab Shop. Well, that's pretty cool. Awesome sauce. Let's see what the other one is. I didn't know I was getting two shirts. Ooh, this is the OG shirt. I wanted one of these. I didn't know he still had them. Awesome. Ding! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back for another episode. Today we got something special. We're doing a few. Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you later. I'm going to show you. We got something special for the X3. Working on a local company with Rise Fab Shop. Uh, on getting some goodies for the X3. Anyways, already got the truck hooked up. Getting the X3 warmed up and ready to get it on the trailer so we can get it out of here and get it to Knoxville. There she is. We'll let her warm up a little bit. Been letting her warm up. We'll take it and get it on the trailer. It's so special. This is my favorite secretary ever. Let's see what we got going on in here. Oh man, all kinds of cool stuff. You might just have to go home with me and play with my puppy. Look who we got inside my side. What'd you just say? I guess this is how Abe sells me a side by side. This is how I sell everybody a side by side. What is this? Oh, is it just, just for your steering adjustment? Oh, okay. Up and down. I didn't know if it was for like a situation where if you 
for people that maybe want their steering wheel and their gauges and stuff lower. It's regular old. How's this work? So that's basically you got two keys. This is go fast and this is valet. This is like oh. a quarter of the horsepower and won't go over 40 miles an hour. Yeah. This is all of it, all the boost, 90 miles an hour. <laughs> so with that hooked into that, then you just once is basically turn your gauges and your lights and stuff on. And then you just got to hold it in. Cool. And all reverse. Yep. You don't have any ramps. It's got a uh, dual clutching system in it, basically like a CVT. It don't have gears, oh, okay. so the clutch won't engage until roughly 25, 2700 RPMs. Does, uh, when uh, people build these, decent power. Uh, usually people just change the clutching setups. Um, I've looked into it and I haven't done any with it, but it's simple things as like springs and wakes and whatnot. What's up, man? Hey, man. How are you? You want to introduce yourself? I'm Chris. I'm with Rise Fab Shop here. I'm the owner. And uh, Abe was gracious enough to bring by his Can-Am X3. So what we're going to do for it is a little bit of product development. We're going to come out with some uh, exhaust products that I think you guys are going to probably love. Um, start out right now with the slip-on mid-pipe OEM fitment. Um, for what we're going to do for Abe is a nice electric cutout, fully Yeet. electric. And... Uh, probably going to piss his neighbors off I'd say so Ding. <laughs> so it's uh yeah it's going to be uh, the start of some great things in the future for us yeah for sure show me I'm going to show everybody a couple things about the exhaust what we're talking about yeah so for right now what we're going to do on this one in particular is it's going to be OM fitment all the way around we're going to replace this mid pipe um, this right here it's going to be an OEM slip on so you can use it with your OEM muffler system for uh you know those trail regulations as far as sound ordinance and stuff go but when you want to go in uh, full yeet mode electronic cutout key fob opens up loud as possible almost straight out of the turbo um, in the future what we'll do also is do our own muffler system that X's out the back of this thing uh, you could have options like um, resonator double mufflers uh, electric cutout no electric cutout whatever you want so it's kind of very modular system Get all that yee yee out of there. <laughs> so if you like this, are you going to do anything for the uh, Razor Boys? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, I just need uh, some guy with the Razor to step up and say they want something for the Razors. <coughs> Jeremy. <Yep>. Fraudy. <laughs> yeah, I think Razors are next, and then we'll just kind of go off that platform and go through the, all the other popular platforms. This is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome high fives. So what's the specs? Like, what are you using as far as tubing on this? Um, this one, to make it as light as possible, it's inch and a half to nine five. It's FE minimum for the weight. Yeah. And we're trying to get, uh, like I said, as light as we possibly can. 
Man, I really like that fuel cell, the radium fuel cell. Fuel cell. Yeah. When I was building mine, I wanted to go with a radium setup, but I didn't want to spend like two to four grand. I was able to get a similar setup through like places like O34, uh, going with like a jazz fuel cell, a poly fuel sock, and then doing my own like pickup and return type system to get another thousand dollars. But it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been an in-tank style, all-inclusive fuel cell. It would have been uh, the traditional uh, fuel surge tank instead of But the surge tank would have come from the 34 Motorsports, which is, I think, more in the realm of like European cars. Yeah, I end up going with like a fuel safe setup. Yeah. But what kind of killed my budget on it was the fact that I still had to buy a pump and a setup for the inside, which was about another four hundred dollars, and then I'll have to upgrade that if I ever go to a different fuel I mean, you upgrade can injectors. Pick up pumps that go to the surge tank itself, and then from the surge tank to the yeah. engine is the, is the one that, that makes the most sense. Because the one since you have a full return system, the one that picks up from the pump has way lower pressure than the one that actually feeds the engine from the surge tank. Gotcha. Go with half the size of the fuel pump, the uh, pump itself. What? Yeah, he put an OEM pump on his FRS on his search tank, and he used all radium stuff on it. Yeah. This guy right here built a sweet little SR FRS. I seen it when it was up at the shop at uh, Fast Tech. Right. I was drooling over it, and I didn't know it was yours, and I was like, wait a minute. It's pretty cool. I like it. Bad days. Bad days. Alright, well I'm gonna get out of here and leave you guys alone. Y'all got work okay. to do. I gotta go yeah, to work. Don't worry, stick for something by, man. Peace, man. I appreciate it, buddy. Alright, bud, I'm out of here. Ooh, what are you working on? This looks fancy. Put some little practice in before we get on the EJ. EJ! Man, that looks cool. Looks shiny. Too bad it'd be under the car. <laughs> Alright, man. High five. Leave me alone so you can work. Yeah. Come on, you wanna say bye? You wanna say bye? So to give you guys a little bit of insight on who is Chris Miller and why is Fab Chop and why I'm working with him. Um, I met this dude through drifting probably about 2015-2016 talked to him once he had like this really sweet uh sc 300 or 400 uh it was had a jay-z and stuff in it it was a pretty awesome car it was it was a ripper um i seen it at an event at the start of the year and was checking it out went over and looked at it talked to him and talked to his dad for a little bit and then at the next event that i attended my car was finished so i went out and started you know, I was in the lineup, had made some passes, was ripping that day. And uh, there was Chris lined up in front of me in his SC. And we're up at Bristol Motor Speedway at one of the East 10 events. And on this particular day, the layout was like a straightaway, just running straight down as fast as you could go. And then you would initiate and go into the first turn. So he's in front of me. And uh, he takes off, man. He's booking right down through there and then all of a sudden he just throws his car in flicks it in and when he monges back and flicks right back to the right all of a sudden i see his wheel and his tire and everything connect with the curb and this thing just come in and went into the air and i never heard him let off the throttle and he just kept on ripping i was like man you know i'm sitting here thinking the car's destroyed or something and he's just ripping all day long and i went eventually went and talked to him and stuff Got to know him a little bit better after that because I was like, hey, man, you know, that was crazy. And so I ever since then drove with him because, you know, Duke can drive, so I want to drive with him. Well, so after a couple years worth of events, fast forward to 2017. Uh, 2017, I decided that I wanted to do Pro-Am. Well, I, I decided that I wanted to build a new car. Well, whenever I started building a new car, 
I was trying to find somebody that could do the cage work on the demands that I had. Well, I contacted a couple companies out of state that I thought that, you know, was pretty, uh, had a good reputation, reputable, reputable companies. Yeah. Anyways, uh, after talking to them for a little while, you know, trying to figure out, set up a date to go get cage work done, it just seemed like they wasn't taking me very serious. So I never followed through with that, and I'm still looking for somebody to to do my cage work. Um, so then one day, Chris contacts me and was like, "Hey man, let me do your cage." And and I was I talked to him for a little bit, and I was like, "Hey, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like, you know, I'm on a time crunch. I have a budget, and." You know, I'm real OCD about what I want. So what I want, you know, it's got to stay within those lines or, you know, I'm not going to be happy with it. And the reason being is, is I, in past cars I built, you know, I've been screwed out of tubing work and cage work, uh, you know, as far as money and everything I got, I end up getting a cage done in one of my other cars and end up having to cut it back out and have somebody else do it because the welds and stuff was bad. So anyways, Chris was like, man, I got you. Just uh, you know, swing by the shop one day and let's let's sit down and talk all this stuff out. So I went by the shop and I told him, I said, look, you know, I got a budget. I've got this amount of time to get it done. And, you know, this is what I want. I want it high and tight. And, and I want to be able to get in and out of the car because I'm six foot one and 220, 230 pounds. You know, I don't want to feel like uh, Ace Ventura climbing out of that rhino's butt every time I got to get in and out of the car. So, we made a deal, you know, we talked about it and everything, and he laid out a price, and he laid out a timeline. He's like, broke it down. He's like, this is what material's going to cost. This is what labor's going to cost. He said, in worst case estimate, I'll have it back to you in two weeks. He's like, two weeks will be max. And this was right around Thanksgiving. So, as soon as Thanksgiving's over, um, dude stuck around at the shop and, you know, went and dropped the car off and dropped it off and he's like, all right, man, I'll let you know when I'm done. Well, it wasn't even a week and a half and he was done. I came through and, you know, got to looking at it and he's like, dude, this is probably the best cage I've ever built. He's like, really didn't want to let it leave the shop because it was a masterpiece of something that, you know, he had created. So me being a bigger person and also having to have a containment seat, there's not a lot of room in the car. So I wanted like a NASCAR style door bars, but I wanted it to where I could sit on it and slope in and get in and out pretty easy. Now, when I told him high and tight, me being six foot, I wanted the bars up as close to the top of the car as possible because I didn't want my helmet hitting on the bars sometimes you get shook around and you know your helmet bounces off and it's not a party my last car i sat up too tall but anyways he did a really good job on the cage work and stuff i'll show you guys the other side i know people like to ride especially you know at drift events and stuff and you get spectators and uh you know people won't ride along so i wanted to make sure that anybody of any size could easily get in and out so I went ahead and I wanted a copy of the exact same thing on the passenger side. Now, fast forward into now on what I'm going to do with the X3. Um, Chris not only does cage work and stuff, he does a lot of exhaust work. Um, originally, I sent him a message and, and was showing him some uh, tree kickers and a bash bar type ordeal that I wanted for the side and the front and the rear of my X3 to kind of add protection uh, just in case of a rollover or hitting something or maybe one of your buddies named Jeremy hitting you in the back uh, one night late at Roll Blue. Uh, keep from messing stuff up. So we talked about it and we talked about it, you know, if we could make something that was reasonable, well, it's something we was going to future invest. Well, he started doing a lot of exhaust work, a lot of stainless steel exhaust work. So I sent him a, a link to, I think it was Evo's Stinger, the little cutout of where you eliminate the catalytic converter and then you have a cutout, which basically at the flip of a switch, you can have a straight pipe. 
Now this thing being turbo, of course I want to hear turbo noises, it'd be pretty cool, and it might piss off my neighbors. So, anyways, I'd sent him a, uh, you know, a link to it, a picture of it, and he's like, dude, that's cool, you know, and I started giving him more information and stuff about it, and he's like, I think we could do that. So, both of us doing a little bit of research, uh, which leads us to today, is working on getting that made and seeing if potentially getting him into the side-by-side -side game. You never know, he might buy one.